and we are back. Mm. Uh, Want to first start off on a, on a serious note and uh, send all of our, our thoughts and uh, our prayers out to the people in New Zealand. Yeah, we do have listeners in New Zealand, uh, and you've always been really good to us for a long time. You guys are having a having a, having a rough week, uh, so uh, we're we're all thinking of you here. The world is with you, mm. so just know that uh, got a lot of love going out. Uh, it's a tough time. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, as far as showbiz news, uh, how how blindsided is this town by the uh, by the uh, the college cheating scandal? Oh my goodness! You know, it, 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 you know, it, it's it's one of those moments of where I'm like, oh, really? And yeah. then I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah totally. But you know, USC, UCLA, uh, some of the names Yale, of these, uh, Stanford. Yale, Stanford, Wake, uh, uh, Wake Forest, uh, these Michigan. really, really, really big schools. Yeah, it's a strange thing though. So my little, my little niece, uh, yeah. my brother Charles, you know, yeah. my brother Charles' daughter, yeah. uh, she's going to Washington University in St. Louis. She's a sophomore right now. Yeah. this is a little girl who worked her butt off yeah. through high school, oh, yeah. doing all of the things you're supposed to do. that you're supposed to do to earn your way into an elite school. That's an elite school, Washington University in yep. St. Louis. And, um, uh, and, my, you know, and my brother hustled scholarships and everything you could possibly yeah. think of to get this kid into this school. And I, you know, I look at her working hard, and, and, I'm, I'm, and, then, I, and then I see this. And you, and and you know, there's that mom of that uh, that kid who had a four point two and applied to like all these sc- yeah. same schools, yeah. and she just filed a five hundred million dollar class action. And suit I hope she gets every freaking <laughs> penny of it. You know, you know the 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 thing that I think uh, where where the Hollywood aspect of this comes in is where people are saying, especially looking at at Lori Laughlin's daughter, and I guess we're not gonna. Be reviewing much more of uh, where comes the where where comes the heart for yeah. you know, Hallmark those yeah. things that we talk about every so often. That's that's not going to continue yeah. anymore. Mm. Uh, but the uh, you, you're already a celebrity. Mm. You're a celebrity's kid. Mm. You're an influencer. You're making a gigantic pile of money because you people follow you on Instagram or whatever it mm. is. Sephora gave you a contract because you're Lori Loughlin's daughter, and you know I. And I'm thinking, so what does the, why would why risk your mom's career and her earnings and your career and your earnings? Yeah. Why put all of that at risk for one particular college? Like, why not go? Yeah. So, what if you went to CSUN? Yeah. What if you went to Cal State LA? Would that damage your brand? What about have- what, yeah, what, hey, 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 knock knock out a semester at Glendale Community College? How about yeah. that? Yeah. That it's, it would be really interesting because what what is it that you're actually purchasing here? A brand. You're purchasing a, a brand. A brand. And That's and it. and not for nothing. We can get, look. Jared Kushner. Jared mm-hmm. Kushner never got into Harvard. Okay, he didn't get into Harvard. There's a there's a, there's a building on that campus well, called the Kushner whatever the we, hell. We the 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 you know the legacy thing. Yeah. The legacy thing. Um, almost everyone who is a child of someone, right? Whether whether you're you're a Bush or a Clinton or a Hollywood royalty or whatever the case is, you're gonna you're gonna get in where you want. Yeah, you're gonna get in where you want because the brand is the thing, and they they see certain applicants as a brand, and the applicants see them as a brand. Mm-hmm. And this is this has gone on legally for centuries. Oh, it's it's, it's uh, you know alumnus and all this kind of thing. look. Yeah. This is this is what it really comes back to though, because we know we have we have it, people have issues with the notion of affirmative action. Yeah. Uh, at at uh, some of these same universities and in all sorts of things, affirmative action. Harvard's being sued about it right uh, now. Right by, now, by, by, the, Asian by the Asian students. And, mm-hmm. and, and I have to point out that these schools always had affirmative action. Yeah. Uh, it just wasn't affirmative action exactly. for people of color and women and, 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 uh, and people uh, of, of, of lesser means. They've always had affirmative action. Uh, so it, I think that we're going to re, we're gonna have to reconstruct the way we talk about this from henceforth, I I what concerns me. I mean, obviously, the college end of it concerns me, and and we've all seen that that in action. The American college system has been screwed up for a long time. Yeah, and but, for a lot of different in a lot of different ways. But the 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 inflate the 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 fact that they're using the college system now to perpetuate celebrity brands. Mm-hmm. That is what really, really troubles me. And Hollywood is going to have to reconcile itself to this. Social media has a lot to blame. The institutions bear a lot of blame. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, this is. 
I mean, you know, everybody there were there were there were thirty seven people total in this thing, mm-hmm. uh, of whom Lori Laughlin and uh, uh, Huffman, uh, Felicity Huffman were were the two that everybody focused on. Yeah. And Felicity Huffman, you know, she was small fry in this. She wrote a check for fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. Like, what a bargain you got! Yeah, uh, there, there are some other people, some marketing guru lady who spent like one point five million or something. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, when when celebrity is is at a place where you have to reinforce the brand with colleges and bribes. Now we're, you know, we talk about how there are no more movie stars, mm-hmm. um, but there are brands. Yeah. Yeah, the Kardashians yeah. are a brand. That's and Chloe, Chloe, and it's, it's a funny thing. I used to make fun of those girls. Uh, the, the, I think the yeah. young one's name is Chloe, right? That's that's the youngest. Yeah. Did the any of one. them even go to college? No. Uh, Chloe is <laughs> is the youngest billionaire. I She's know. the youngest. Saw that. Saw uh, that. Uh, and you know, and I, we can make as much fun of her as you want to, but that money didn't come from nowhere. Yeah. They they sell crap. It's yeah. all about the brand. Yeah. Uh, and and they figured it out. And I got to give a, a certain amount of credit to their mother you and i because we go yeah. you know we, we knew sure. robert and all the way back yeah. oj trial and all that kind sure. of stuff you know and after he died uh, uh that that mom I, what, what, what's her name um something yeah, chris 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 jenner she had to figure out a way yeah. uh to sustain that family and it, it was a little pimpish what she did oh little, she, pimpish. little pimpish straight up a little pimpish yeah but you know what you know what mom that's about five billion dollars you pimped out over there, yeah. and them kids are going to be okay for the rest of their lives. They're, I don't know about their minds, uh, <laughs> uh, but they'll be able to pay for whatever problems uh, they yeah. have. That's for sure. So I don't know. Anyway, man, here's the thing: for years and years and years, I have been pimping out something too. Right? Yeah. I went to Harvard. I went to Oxford. Yeah. I got to tell you, I for years I used to walk around. I used to, I used to say that. Very, it got you traction. You, you, it it yeah. did. It, it, yeah. I, you're in a room. You say that, and yeah. suddenly people care about what you're. See, isn't it, that it, weird? It, it was kind of messed up, though. It was kind of messed up, but see, I did. I did it. It's the same thing. Whenever, whenever uh, I, I will drop UCLA in a conversation. Yeah, uh, UCLA Film School. Oh, really, dude? It's like really. Yeah. Because 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 uh, th- then I start thinking. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was there with, you know, Alexander Payne, mm-hmm. and I was there, you know, with a few other people who've gone on to do things, I guess. Uh, you know, Gina Prince was there, and yeah, but still, it's just school. Yeah. <laughs> it was just school. But it's a thing. It's not like I was knighted. It's not like they put a, a, a machine in my, on my electrodes in my brain and gave me talent. You still got to deliver, yeah, but for yeah. some reason... Yeah. The brand is the thing. The brand is the thing. The brand is yeah. the thing. And I like I said, and I don't know it. It seems to me that some of these places are going to be diminished now. You yeah, know, they will. U- USC, frankly, has been getting away with it for like for a while. Well, USC is a private school. It's yeah. an it's an alumni thing there. You know, you you saw that right? That uh, Lori Loughlin's oldest daughter, when the news broke, she was on Rick Caruso's yacht with his daughter, who's also a freshman there. Mm. Now, Rick Caruso, for those who don't know, is like one of the big billionaire developers in L.A. He developed The Grove yeah. and like five other shopping centers here. Uh, he's, he's a big cheese. Yeah. and uh, Not famous, he, but far a, and away richer than any of these people that we're talking about. one of the USC trustees. Mm. And you're like, well, if you're that tight with Rick Caruso and his daughter, couldn't Rick have pulled some strings you, you, for you? You'd you, you think – you know, did you have to pull that whole crew scam? I it's just it boggles the mind, you know, it really does. I the, the lack of character, just you yeah. know, simple character, uh, through and through really kind of blows me away. I mean, and just, it, just it, none. It, and, at the, and at the same time, because I really like Felicity Huffman, yeah, you know, I do, and and I suspect that in that at a certain point, because we know how easy it is to get insulated uh, by celebrity. Mm. You don't leave your house. You know you have handlers, your business manager, publicist. publicist. They do all all your stuff for you. Money comes in. You work. You don't really ever balance a checkbook. You don't ever worry about paying a bill. Mm. You can't really go out anywhere because people will recognize you. And if they do, it's all scheduled, and cars pick you up, and you really become very pampered. I remember I remember Jay Leno once talking about how when people. You know, would say they'd see him park on the uh, the NBC lot there, and and they'd be like, "Wow, you drive to work? 
and he, he says it's the weirdest thing. The higher you go in this business, the less people think you can do for yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they just assume that you're 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 pampered like British royalty or something. And and, and it is a generational thing too. Yeah, like, I guess it is. You know, William H Macy for one thing. You know, I run yeah. into William all the time. Sure, great He's guy. He's all over town. He's all over. Great town. guy, ordinary guy. Uh, and the kind of guy where if you've if you've met him or bumped into him yeah. uh, like I do at junkets and red carpets and all that kind of stuff, eventually he's gonna remember your face and know your name. He knows my name. Yeah. Uh, and you, so you know, hey Tim, how you doing? And we have these and we have we have we have conversations. I can't even interview him anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, because we just start talking and the interview goes away. Now he's a really cool guy. He's an everyday, ordinary guy, and she is too. And, and you know, and and, yeah. and I'm like, so so I'm like, you know, where did where did that, you know, what I'm saying? Because William H. Nobody paid for him to there get into a, anything. There was a great uh, David Mamet wrote a uh, a really great piece because you know he loves them dearly. He's known them for decades since before they were married. Both yeah, of them, the, right? the, 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 that theater back in Chicago. Yep. They he did founded all that. theater troops with yep. Macy. Uh, she acted in his plays. You know he. And um, he really he he went to town. He was you know without excusing what 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 was done, but he called for the Texas verdict, mm. which is um, uh, not guilty, but don't do it again, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, um, which which he's sticking up for his friends. Yeah. But at the same time, what I liked about it was he called out the the whole rotten system yeah. of you know uh, legacy preferences and everything else that sort of prompts the the problem of universities being valued for the brand as opposed to the education. As opposed for the education, yeah. yeah. And, and it should be about the education. Because really the should. fact of the matter is um, all, all the educations across these university state schools, private schools, yeah. wh why, sh why would there be any significant difference in the education at these schools? Yeah. Uh, the subjects are the same. If you're a history major, the history stays yeah. the same. The history doesn't change at UCLA no. from from no. you know, the, so, so you know I mean it's just I teach at Mount St. Mary's University. You where, I to, where I've taught, yeah. Uh, uh, and and you know and I I go up to the school and I think to myself, this is a you know this is a lovely school. It's an all it's, it's an all uh, an, um, an all, all girls school. Girl school. Uh, and and I and I and I think to myself, I I I don't know why I would send my kid to any you know just I just send them here. Yeah, it's a beautiful school. Yeah. And I know, and you know, yeah, I know what I'm teaching these kids. You know, yep. I, I know what I'm what what, what I'm uh, investing in them. I know what you invest in them. I, I teach the same thing there when I teach at Glendale Community College. I teach at Glendale Community College, yeah. not a fancy all private girl school. It's the same class. Yeah. You know, it's they, they, they're not getting a better education at no. Mount St. Mary's than I'm giving them at Glendale Community College. It's, you can, it's a, you, you know, it's it's a thing. I, it's yeah. we could go on forever on yeah. this. It okay. is, yeah. it is, it is. Um, but anyway, it's really rocked this town, and it's uh, it's 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 having reverberations through lifetime and th you know all over the place. What do you it's, think should happen in terms of the actual kids who are in those universities right now? Um, um, wrongly, what should happen to the kids? You know, that's that's a uh, they they should have. I don't think they should be immediately ejected. But I do think that they should. There should be an investigation and a reevaluation. Mm. Um, because is it possible that some of them would? It, it, did they know? That's my first question. Mm. Did they know what their parents were doing? If not, then they're victims too. Mm. And then the second question I would have is: Could they have legitimately gotten in on their own merits without the tinkering? Mm. And if so, then I think somebody needs, and, and that's a hard thing to reevaluate, you know, to go back in time and do a hypothetical what if, if you had applied and you, this all hadn't happened. But I, I kind of want to see some, I, I want to see it done fairly and methodically and consistently. It's a meaningful question because the it's fact a that matter is, that's a slot. That is a slot. There are only so many of these and slots. If and you if you got that wrongly, yeah. somebody else belongs did, did there. Not, did not get a chance to go to that. So somebody else belongs it's, there. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a yeah. Thing. No, it's true. With I mean, look, I, uh, I was in graduate school for three days. I received a full assistantship to the graduate communications program at Pepperdine, Pepperdine. University. And uh, all my friends were telling me at the time, like, dude, you just got a film degree from UCLA. Go out, hit the hit the pavement, be, go to the, do do what you got to do in the world. And I was like, no, guy, you know, my mother's riding me, man. She wants me to get a you know an, an advanced degree, so I've got teaching credentials and all this stuff, right? So I was in the, I got a full assistantship, which mm -hmm. meant be a TA, get your tuition fully paid for. It was fantastic. And three days in. I was like, this is all. I, this is. Re I just spent the last two years of my life like making music videos and movies, and and now I'm going to be doing library research, and and yeah. I I like got this pit in my stomach, and I and I was like, I can't do this. 
I consulted with my mother. I said, look, I seriously can't do this. And being the incredibly supportive woman she was, she said, then that's fine. Then you don't, you don't have to do it. Don't, don't feel any pressure from me. Mm. Uh, and I was like, oh, thank goodness. And, uh, man, at third, I went and I sold my books back and I was free. <laughs> and then our buddy Dave Weishart, uh, the emails me and he says, you're never going to believe this. I know a woman who just got an email said, hey, a slot opened up at Pepperdine for yeah. the assistantship. And I was happy about that yeah. because I didn't want that position. And I left, and by weird chance, Boom. Two, two degrees of separation away, there was someone, a flesh and blood human being, a woman who now had a chance to take advantage of that position that wanted it. That wanted it. That That's wanted the, yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I've always remembered that, that you know where you are – is where somebody else isn't. Yeah, yeah. It somebody matters. else. It, it matters. When I saw, when I saw, and I think it was, I think it's, uh, I think it was Lori Laughlin's daughter, and she's yeah. on this. She's doing that video, and she's talking about how she was there for the partying and the college uh, yeah, experience, and she an doesn't really video. care. About, it's just that's so, so like, upsetting, you know. And I go to, and I, like I said, I go up to that university, and I see these girls in my class, and these is my, my, my students, by the way, my students are badass. They listen to the show. Yeah. Hi, girls. Um, <laughs> uh, it, it, they're badass and working. And working and work. and I see this kid and she says that you know and I'm like, oh, man, that's just that burned that it burned does. it that does really burned yeah all right yeah. all right well we're gonna we're gonna jump into uh, DVDs and Blu-rays got so much anime the, the, there's just a ton of anime so uh, for anime fans I'm gonna I'm gonna go through as much of this as I can in this uh, short little time before we get into. 4K and new movies, and some really interesting 4K. Got some TV, got some Criterions, got a lot of good stuff, and we have a, an uh, you know we have an interview which uh, is probably going to wind up next week. Okay. So I won't uh, overly tease that, but uh, yeah, that's probably on next week's show. Anyway, starting off, got some uh, cool Funimation here. This is uh, this is all f- these are all February Funimation releases. Got some older ones that I'm going to try to get to, too. That, but the February stuff is really, really great. Uh, ReZero has, uh, has a new release out, ReZero, starting life in another world. Um, this is you know pretty, pretty decent fantasy stuff. Uh, the, the character Natsuki Subaru, um, who is uh, between worlds, let's say. This is kind of, you know, supernatural, you're dead, you're between worlds. And you can kind of sense the other world. Anyway, um, it's uh, it's it, you know it's not qu- it's beyond being psychic. Anyway, uh, ReZero, very very interesting, uh, fascinating anime world. Ace Attorney, not a huge fan of that. Ace Attorney season one is on Blu-ray and DVD combo pack. All of these are DVD and Blu-ray combo packs. Um, Ace Attorney is is just a really odd anime courtroom attorney show, and uh, I guess it's probably more meaningful. In, uh, in Japan, but anyway, uh, it did, doesn't really work for me so well. Aria the Scarlet Ammo AA, the complete series. Um, also didn't quite get this one. This is a, this is a little bit confusing. Uh, there's a, there, there, this is like a whole woman spy thing, and um, it's girl power, but it's not like uh, Captain Marvel girl power, which <sighs> I'm all about. We love Captain Marvel, don't we? I love we? that movie. Everybody's overanalyzing that movie. It's great. Love it's, it. it's just good, and that's all the hell there is to it. And yeah. she's good in it. Yeah. Miss Brie Larson. Oh, she's fantastic. Square jawed badass she is. She's fantastic. You, what's, what's the name of the actress plays her best friend? I, I, I'll, I'll look it up real quick. She um, steals the movie. There's a sequence. In, I know we're, we're DVDs, oh but there's a sequence in that movie. And, and, and I know that you know this sequence, but yep. for the people who are watching, uh, who will go and see this movie, that sequence in the movie, when, she, when the little girl, she's a little girl, and she has all these accidents, right? Yeah. She crashes that yeah. go kart. She falls down. She, she misses. She, she misses, misses the, with the baseball bat. With everything, she, you know, she gets yeah. hurt. She's bleeding. She gets. Yeah. And then later in that movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. they repeat that, that yeah. sequence and they fantastic. show her getting up from every one of those things. I cried, dude. I was just like, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she I gets cried. up. She turns I'm, that go kart. I'm the over. daddy. I'm the daddy of a daughter. That was the that was the moment where the movie just reached into my chest and grabbed my heart, and I just. I'm I, sorry. That's Anna, and that's that's um, Anna Anna. Bolden is uh, yeah, it's, it's Ryan, Ryan Fleck and Anna Bolden, and and, and and that's that's Anna. Yeah, that's sure. Anna. Yeah. She's like, no, no, we're gonna we're gonna smack her down. We're gonna make sure she gets up. Yeah, uh, and I, I do. I just love that movie yeah, so much. I do. I, Considering I, that Aquaman, good lord. Did, have you have you looked at the new uh, the new Avengers trailer that just dropped? No. 
It's it's really it, good. It's, it, you know what's the best thing of it? Well, there are two great things about it. Number one, it's just epic. It just it's this epic heroic thing. It just makes you feel like it's a, like an old fashioned western crossed with a you know sword and sandal epic. It's Ben Hur. <laughs> it just it has this really epic quality to it. And it gives you no clue as to the plot. Mm. Thanos doesn't even show up in the entire trailer. It's just it's just people saying, you know, hope, power, life, friends. You know, it's all yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. And but it ends with this terrific little tag where Thor and uh, and Danvers, mm -hmm. Captain Marvel, are standing there and they're just kind of staring at each other with the other the other Avengers all around. And it's a stare down, mm -hmm. right? And he puts his hand out. Shoom, and the new hammer, like, which is half hammer, half axe. Yeah. Because, you know, it, it, the last one got wrecked in the last Thor movie. It, like, flies into his hand, and he's still staring her down. And then she gives him this wry little half smile. That I love that. That little half smile. Like, yeah, all right. I, and, and then he looks at everybody else, and he goes, I like this one. <laughs> it's it's what, just great. What I love. I'm such a sucker for that I stuff. Do, what I love is it's very clear in Captain Marvel, yeah. the movie. That she is unequivocally and absolutely the most powerful being of all of them in the universe. Yeah, it's just it, it's just that's just a given. Yeah, which of course is true in the in, in, yeah. in, the, in the context of the of the stories too. Yeah. But it, but they make it real clear. Make yeah. no mistake. Yeah, she can kick everybody's ass. Yeah. So just you know, let's let's yep. see what's going to go down. Yep. Anyway, and, let's and, go back. And quite possibly the the little girl from mm -hmm. Captain Marvel too, who's going to be grown up. Oh, Tom. Everybody's figured out she's going to turn into photons. Yeah. So anyway, uh, then we've also got uh, Grimgar Ashes and Illusions, which is uh, really, really interesting. Um, this is the complete series of Grimgar Ashes and Illusions. This is, uh, I want to compare it a little bit to maybe Starship Troopers. Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a really interesting premise. Uh, where the you have these characters who wake up in uh, in this completely strange environment. They have no idea who they are or where they came from. Total amnesia, and um, from there there is this paramilitary fate where in this fantasy world, this kind of sci-fi fantasy world, this paramilitary uh, destiny that will eventually answer all those questions. Um, it's really interesting. Grimgar Ashes and Illusions, very very good. Uh, Prince of Stride Alternative, the complete series. Uh, this is from the people that did uh, Death Note. And it's basically, a, you know, a, a competitive sports anime uh, all centered around these these races that they do. It's, uh, you know, it's a little bit of school. It's a little bit of, um, a little bit of speed racer, I guess, in a way. It's okay. It's fine. Haruchika, Haruta, and Chika. I practiced that. Mm. Haruchika, Haruta, and Chika, the complete series. Uh, there are only subtitles on this. There is no English language track on this. And this is, uh, you know, school politics and friendship and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's, it's not really that interesting, to be honest. So that's why they probably didn't put subs on it, because it's very, very specific to the Japanese stuff. Uh, then there's FLCL, which is uh, it, it's supposed to be funny, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a... It's a it's kind of a romantic comedy, but uh, didn't really work for me too well. That's uh, that skews a little bit younger than I would normally have been comfortable with. Um, my favorite of all of these, I'm going to tell you right now, is Samurai Seven: The Complete Series. This is the coolest thing in the world. They took uh, Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai mm -hmm. and expanded it into an epic anime saga, mm. and it's great. Fantastic. It's really, really great. It's really, really cool. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's accessible to everybody. You don't have to be an anime fan to enjoy it. You don't even have to be an Akira Kurosawa fan to enjoy it. It's really, really good. Samurai 7, the complete series. Really well animated, really well written, and uh, it's it's just absolutely terrific. And it expands the story in a really interesting way. They invent all kinds of new tangents to it that, mm. uh, that aren't necessarily obvious but are suggested in the movie. Uh, if you are a fan of uh, Tukin Ranbo Hanamaru... That is now out in season two. That's uh, that's uh, that's really as far as all these mythical journey things go. That is one of the better ones. That's actually very very nicely uh, drawn, beautifully animated, really very artful. Uh, Garo, which you know is a universe unto itself as well, has part two of Vanishing Line. Uh, on the long journey to El Dorado, that continues. Uh, then we've also got getting through some of this real quickly. A couple free. You know, that's free exclamation point, the mm. the, uh, the free stuff. 
with the uh, Iwatobi Swim Club and uh, all that swimming nonsense and these things, which a lot of people love. Uh, you know, it's swimming competition in schools. It just, for some reason, it's 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 a thing. So we've got free Eternal Summer season two, and then free Iwatobi Swim Club season one. So if the if anime swimming and school competitions and school politics is your thing, you're gonna love it. Uh, season one of a thing called the Dagashi Kashi. Uh, yeah, I don't know about this. Uh, this is the, the, I think you have to really be connected to some very strange aspect of Japanese culture to to fully appreciate this. I would love it if somebody familiar with this would email us at gods at digigods dot com or mm. gods at cinegods dot com and explain to me uh, this food fixation here because. Um, there's this this all kind of centers around like food and snacks and these weird branded ramens and it's a very very peculiar uh storyline and it's hard to really get into uh then uh three more here and I'll uh, I'll we'll move on to other things and I'll see if I can uh, call out some of the other anime for later Dead Man Wonderland the complete series really interesting really interesting artwork uh, this is a, it's pretty brutal though. Uh, this is not for kids. Most of this stuff is dated for, for 14. Th- you, this is very adult, very violent, very gory. Do not want to be exposing this to kids. This mm. is really, really adult stuff. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, you know, serial killer, you know, shooter, mass murderer stuff. But, um, it's good. It's really, really good. Dead Man Wonderland, the complete series. And then uh, two Luck and Logic titles. There is Luck and Logic, the complete series, and Hina Logic from Luck and Logic, the complete series. And uh, this, again, it's school politics. You know, it's a big deal in Japanese anime. I guess uh, teenagers love to see their stuff, you know, their their sports competitions and their fantasies and uh, everything else, all their all their relationship with their peers sort of depicted in these shows. And uh, these are l- not terribly accessible, but they have a fantasy aspect to them. You know, uh, these the kind of a man, men in black thing mm. fighting these these uh, these monsters, uh, which is you know, um, in in the case of uh, Hina Logic, I, I think it's maybe a little bit more accessible. But anyway, it, Luck and Logic, it's another one of those. And then uh, let's talk about some 4K right now. Mm. Got a bunch of stuff on 4K. New stuff, old stuff. I'm going to talk about the old stuff first. This is a film that never got enough credit. Mm. Tim, I think you like this too. Lord of War. Oh, yeah. You, 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 when, that's that period. Nick had a period where he made a few good films, really, really good films yeah. in a row, and, 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 and it started with that. Uh, adaptation uh, and, and a few others. But yeah. he, had this, he had this run there. Yeah, he did. Where, uh, where, he, where he made some really significant films, and that's one of them. Ethan Hawke and Jared Leto are in this as well. This is an Andrew Nichol film. Andrew Nichol has not had the career that I always hoped he, he would yeah. have after Gattaca. Yeah. Um, uh, perhaps because he's uh, on some level uh, a little too thoughtful. Yeah. But um, Andrew Nichol... Is a really, really, really sharp guy, and uh, you know, it, it, just rife with ideas. Andrew Nichol also uh, wrote the uh, the Truman Show. Yeah, and uh, you know, just a really thoughtful science fiction mind, speculative fiction. I also am a huge fan of uh, the the Al Pacino film that he did um, about the the AI celebrity. Oh yeah, uh, Simone. The, the Simone. Yeah. Yeah, with Sim One, Simone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he he just goes into some really interesting, and sometimes it's a little bit too too high minded, too heavy. Too too big headed for people, and I think Lord of War was a little bit of that. Nick uh, Nick Cage is is really phenomenal in this. Is an arms dealer, an illegal arms dealer, and what this is, it's not just a regular thriller about an illegal arms dealer. It's very much about who he is, mm. what's in his head, and uh, what drives him. It's incredible. It's an incredibly elaborate character study, all wrapped into a very very meticulous large scale movie and it goes into all kinds of interesting tangential areas that are political and social and everything else and it doesn't lecture you it just forces you to really kind of come to grips with a with a world that we always read about but we don't really understand a- a- Andrew Nichol was was Adam McKay before Adam McKay yeah uh, b- the big short exactly. and uh, vice less he, he yeah. was he that, that that's what's going on only, only he, he he doesn't try to be as cute about it that's like it. Adam you know yeah. Adam is lecturing a little bit and he wants to be funny and Andrew, Andrew uh, isn't trying to be cutesy about it, but he is trying to explain. Yep. 
Yeah. So very interesting. And I tip my hat to Lionsgate for putting this out on 4K. Uh, you know, nobody out there is really aggressively mining their catalog, their library for 4K titles. They're putting out new stuff, the, the stuff that's getting all the heavy attention. And somebody over at Lionsgate said, you know what? This is an underrated movie. Let's put it out on 4K. We know it has a following. That small following will probably buy it on 4K, and it will justify the cost of doing it. And I, I really hope that that pans out because uh, it, it's, it was a good decision. It's a good film. It's a good-looking 4K. Really, really benefits from it. Nickel is a, is a great visual stylist, and it has a, you know some good extras on it, stuff that's been out before. Audio commentary with Andrew Nickel and some featurettes. Um, but, boy, they did a really, really good job with the 4K. Yeah. Uh, the other three 4Ks of the week... Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, the second Fantastic Beasts movie in the prequel series for uh, Harry Potter. This includes an extended cut with deleted scenes not seen in theaters, as though that was needed. I don't know why. Uh, Here's a thing that's a little bit weird to me on this. This says, redeem code by 331 of 2021. Mm. Now, keeping in mind... That this is Warner Brothers and Movies Anywhere. I just want to let everybody know, Movies Anywhere codes do not expire, like the old ultraviolet codes. Mm. So I am a little bit perplexed because that isn't why even has, on, that's very specific. why they would do that. It's not going to expire, and Warner Brothers can't control that. Mm. Disney controls Movies Anywhere. This code will not expire. Now, they may just be trying to prompt you to do that. Maybe that's a sales tool. For, you know, redeem code buy. It doesn't say it'll expire after that, yeah. but it's not going to. Mm. So I want to let everybody know, ignore that. If you have an old ultraviolet code, in theory, unless it's universal. Universal has issues, and I'm fighting with them over this, and they won't give me a straight answer. Mm. But uh, in general, the idea is that all ultraviolet codes that once expired with ultraviolet are good again with movies anywhere. Ah. As long as they are with Warner Brothers or Fox or the, the companies that came over to movies anywhere. So, so it uh, moved with the yeah okay yeah. Anyway, uh, did you see this? Oh yeah, you know eh, yeah right yeah, 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 yeah I agree. Yeah. It's on 4K. It looks good on 4K, but it's it's meh. Uh, Mortal Engines, biggest bomb of last oh, year. Man, what I a know. mess! Uh, right, uh, Peter Jackson threw his name on a thing that's like a cyberpunky anime thing with giant cities that move around in a post-apocalyptic future and. I don't really get what no. <laughs> this was doing. Um, it's based on a book, right? Yeah. Wasn't that the deal? Who who says, let's spend $150 million on a big uh, adaptation of a book about like battle cities? I, like yeah. the whole city is a giant tank. I don't understand. Well, it's, it's, it, uh, yeah, it's, probably, <clears throat> it's probably because his name was on it. Yes. You know, you put his name on it. And, well, that ain't going to work a second time. No. Uh, looks great though, you know, tons of extras on here, but man, this is just, it's, and it's boring is the worst thing. It's just yeah. so much CGI. It's boring. Let's talk a minute about Mary Poppins returns on 4k, four Academy award nominations. Didn't win any of them. Didn't deserve to. Um, I, I would refer everybody to cinegods.com where I reviewed this, uh, rather angrily. Mm. Um, a lot of people love this. I don't begrudge people their love of it. My it's, daughter. it's not a remake of Mary Poppins, no, though. A lot of people think that's not really, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I, you know, I took a children's literature course at UCLA, not because I thought it was easy, mm. which a lot of people did. I, I still remember by about the end of that first week, there were people in class saying, "It's too much reading, man. This is a children's <laughs> literature course. I thought there'd be, uh, you know, the, the boneheads are always looking for the easy electives, right? <gasps> yeah. They're like, we're, we're reading so much. You know, they thought it was going to be, you know, green eggs and ham or something. I, I don't know what it was. Uh, but but it very it takes a very serious approach to children's literature, Bridge to Terabithia and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we read all the Mary Poppins books in that class, and they're really good. But uh, the, what they did was they took some of the other Mary Poppins books, the sequel books, which the next one takes place six months later, not, you know, 20 years later. Mm-hmm. And um, and Mary comes back, and there's a, you know, there's a whole thing, and they're all very – they're all delightful and sweet. The problem with this one is – that they they ignore those books basically. They have her come back in some drab pre World War II depression era thing, mm. and basically go through all the beats of the original movie all over again. Mm-hmm. Except they retcon the original movie. Mm. That f- that 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 coin that he was the little boy was going to give away. Mm-hmm. He well, it turns out that it was invested, 
and now they've invented this whole elaborate thing as to the they're going to lose their house and the money was invested and how do we get the money and we got oh they and now it becomes a caper film yeah and it's a heist film and there's a villain and all these things that the original didn't have and didn't need mm-hmm. and it, the, it fails in the same way that I guess it was called Christopher Robinson the yeah. Winnie the Pooh in the same yeah. way you know and you, you're watching this movie you know, it's the Winnie the Pooh movie whatever it, but what we're watching is this miserable adult who hates his job. Yeah. With his, with his, you know, I'm like, why in the world would they make a movie? It's the antithesis of everything, everything that people that want. Movie. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, yeah. it's very upsetting to me. Um, but a lot of people did like it. I don't begrudge them that. But thematically, I feel like this is a betrayal. Mm. And, um, you know, a, uh, uh, an English friend of ours, an English, <laughs> an English publicist, was completely dumbfounded as to what Emily Blunt was doing with her accent. She was, it, it was very funny. She did a Facebook post where she said, She's combining this like East London diphthong with a Yorkshire. Da, 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 da. It was a very Henry Higgins analysis of her uh, of her accent, and uh, yeah, it was kind of a weird thing that she was doing. I don't get it. So anyway, that's on 4K. Does it look good? Fantastic. Yeah. Extras, lovely. Uh, sing-alongs and a, an hour of bonuses, and going back to Cherry Tree Lane, which looks all drab and everything. But I am not a fan. Mm. All right, Tim, what do we got? I'm going to knock off some uh, LGBT stuff, mostly from uh, TLA releasing a little bit from Deku De- De- as well. So we have um, uh, five short films from a very from the noted photographer Ohm, who is who is a noted photographer, uh, also noted for making some extremely uh, explicit and, and, and intriguing. Um, uh, gay short films. This includes five of them, all c- collectively still only 74 minutes worth of, uh, of viewing. Anyway, uh, it's really lovely shot stuff. Most of the stories are fairly uh, you know, you know, familiar sort of stories between young men who meet here and there and uh, and, and are trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. Uh, but it's really beautifully shot stuff from Ohm, uh, short film collection. Another collection of six shorts called Testosterone uh, from DayQ. Uh, again, featuring this one uh, from a, a number of different directors, uh, but uh, some of these films are really, really, really good. Uh, All together, about 82 minutes worth of viewing from this short film collection called Testosterone. This is volume two from that collection. Um, uh, we have a film called, uh, this is a wonderful I, a little uh, lesbian film called uh, Nude Area. It's just a really lovely film, um, um, uh, a series of about 15 vignettes. They're all strung together, and they have a through line, uh, so they're not like individual short films. There is a through line, and they're just really uh, beautiful films, mostly um, uh, mostly about this Dutch teenager named uh, Naomi who's wandering around uh, Amsterdam, and, uh, and she runs into this uh, lovely Middle Eastern girl, and it's about what that means uh, to, to, the, to their lives if, they, if people find out who they are. And, and how they love. Very, very powerful little series of vignettes there. Uh, we have a film called Seeds, um, which is also from TLA releasing. Um, a neat little movie, uh, notable because Carmen Mora is in it. You've seen Carmen Mora oh, in, a whole, yeah. in a whole bunch yeah. of Pedro Amadabar sure. films. I mean, so she, she plays the mother of this little boy. He's just beginning to figure out uh, that he's gay. He meets this gardener, uh, and some sort of illicit things sort of happen. But it's a, it's, a, it's a powerful and lovely little film that I enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, and then we have a few, uh, including Postcards from London, which is as much of a uh, sort of an art film as it is anything else. It's um, it's sort of like a you know, you know a gay film, but it's really about art and the art world, and we're sort of roaming around Soho. Young man uh, falls in with this group of sort of raconteurs, and, uh, and you know, and, and, they, and, they, and they, they, they pick up these people. But mostly we're just sort of roaming around the sort of Soho art world, and and um, uh, getting into all that stuff there. It's sort of neat. Uh, the um, uncut director's the uncut director's cut of He Loves Me, which is actually a, a, a lovely film. It's about this uh, gay couple. Uh, their their relationship is sort of falling apart. They decide to go out uh, to a sort of deserted uh, beach and hang out and see if they can uh, repair what's going wrong in their relationship. It's really, as much as anything else, just a sort of meditation. We wander around these be- these beautiful locations and they talk, uh, and uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, there and then there is a series, uh, season one of Woke, which is also kind of a cool. Uh, 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 serious there. This one is about uh, a, a young man who goes back to his hometown uh, to, in search of this uh, fellow that he had met many, many years ago who tried to kiss him. Uh, and he goes back to his hometown looking for this guy and finds out uh, finds a whole bunch of interesting stuff, but mostly he finds out, finds out a lot of stuff about himself. So this is, this is season one of Woke from Deku as well. There we go. With all that business, 
And I'll, uh, I'll I'll blow through a couple more uh, animes real quick here. Uh, these are these are things that I think are worth mentioning. We got some franchised stuff here. Uh, another entry in the uh, Gundam universe. This is Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Bandit Flower, which is uh, one of the best standalone Gundams that I have yet seen. Most of this stuff gets it it, it requires you to have a, a pretty deep Gundam IQ. This is the you know Gundam universe is enormous. Yeah, and uh, be, uh, yeah. Oh, it's like Marvel. It's it's even bigger than Marvel. It's just it's just vast, and it's it's hard to sometimes get up to speed if you if you you know they, they all kind of dovetail off of something else, and this mm-hmm. one does too a little bit. Uh, this takes place after the the one year war, but. Uh, it's very self-contained in this this secret operation, this Operation Thunderbolt, which is very much kind of a, a dirty dozen type thin going uh, type of thing. And uh, Io, this character Io, is uh, is piloting the Atlas Gundam uh, to to this you know to to get inside the uh, the area controlled by the South Sea Alliance. And it's a, you know it's like a sabotage mission, but of course it all leads to a big battle in the end, which is a lot of fun. And you're you're watching it for for the whole Gundam tech thing. That's what it is. It's all about that. But it's really nice. It's self-contained. It doesn't re- require you know a whole long historical lead of the ancient battles, and it doesn't sort of take you into another place. It's going to require a lot of time. It's self-contained and does a really nice job. Uh, we also have uh, another One Piece. Uh, you know, One Piece continues to be really super popular, and uh, this one is too. Yep. This is a 3D 2Y TV special. The 3D is crossed out. Make of that what you will. Uh, but anyway, it, uh, it, it's, it, it's more the same. There's also Dragon Ball Super, which I still don't get. This is part six, episode 66 to 78. I'm pretty sure I watched the one that came before this and that I should have some idea vaguely of what's going on, but I don't. I really have no idea. It's yeah. just all that same Dragon Ball stuff. Uh, Death Note also continues to be a big thing. We've got a uh, live-action Death Note, which creeps the hell out of me. That makeup belongs in anime. It is just, it should not be in this world. Live-action <laughs> Death Note is Light Up the New World. Uh, that's a Blu-ray DVD combo, and, uh, you know, that, it's, just, it's just creepy. It's just really, really creepy. The God of Death and his his Reapers and that makeup that like it's like somebody had gave the Joker some really bad plastic surgery yeah, yeah. and he yeah. didn't recover. Um, but then there's also uh, the live action double feature uh, Death Note and Death Note: The Last Name, which is maybe a little bit less creepy, but it's still creepy. So uh, I'm I'm you know Death Note has a following. It is what it is. Uh, Citrus, the complete series. Um, it, I guess it's cute. Uh, it's an all-girls school, girl politics. Uh, that's also from Funimation, Blu-ray DVD combo set. It's it's basically um, it's basically a gay romance, but anime style. It's all right. Uh, Overlord is fantastic. Overlord is absolutely great. And if you're unfamiliar with Overlord, you should definitely discover it. This is uh, this is this is again a a fantasy world, a, um, a demons and mythical quests and all you know very very Tolkieny and Lord of the Ringsy, but it's really 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 cool. It's different from all the others, and uh, it has its own it has its own really cool vibe, and it's dark and you know it's gothic and uh, and the animators really really went to town on it. And uh, let's see, the last two I'm going to pull out here. And we're going to leave the, the rest for another time. Satoshi Khan is one of the all-time great uh, anime legends. And this is from Shout. And it is Satoshi Khan's Perfect Blue. It's a 20th anniversary edition, fully remastered, first time ever on Blu-ray. If you are not familiar with Satoshi Khan, you need to discover him. And Perfect Blue is, the, is really a, a great one to, uh, to do that with. It is um, essentially about a. It's a kind of a coming of age story about a particular woman who um, is is looking to find her place in the world. Uh, she was, you know, going to try to become a celebrity, and she winds up kind of experiencing this really, really interesting life crisis, this midlife crisis that is expressed in animation in the most wonderful and beautiful and poetic way, and it is. It's really, really. Um, it it is very pertinent today. I, I I won't go into any of the other details, but some of the stuff we talked about at the top of the show with mm. the college cheating mm-hmm. scandal and mm-hmm. all that, 
factors right into this, and it's mm-hmm. really, really, really worth uh, seeing. And then uh, the last one I want to mention here is uh, is absolutely gorgeous. This is from Sente Filmworks. It's a beautiful special edition, the complete collection of Land of the Lustrous, which is dazzlingly beautiful, and uh, they did a really, really good job with this. The uh, uh, Again, it's a fantasy world, as these things many are, but these are about gems that are that become human they're living crystals mm. and the, what that entails in their lives and their experiences with each other and with humans is really uh there's a whole metaphorical subtext to this that is really really fascinating and uh it, it's really really interesting what they've done with this it's it's incredibly well thought out and it has uh, some interesting animations as uh, special features and trailers from sentai but um it's really, really interesting. What do humans and gems have in common? What, what you know, we, we we can say to a person, "You're the diamond of my life," or you know, whatever. But mm. but there's a there's an analogy there that's yeah. uh, that's really interesting. So, and a great tagline here: even even diamonds can shatter. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah. there we go. New uh, movies. Yeah. Other a few new, new movies. movies. The, uh, particularly this one uh, here, "The Miseducation of Cameron Post," which was a film uh, that won a grand jury prize at Sundance and that still didn't get picked up. I know. It says something about that Sundance Film yeah. Festival. Well, film festivals in general. I won't just beat up Sundance, but it says something about uh, the fact that there are uh, over the last several years, I'll say at least five or six years, the top prize winners at Sundance have not performed very well in the world. Uh, how about twenty years? Yeah, you know, For twenty years. You, you go like Little Miss Sunshine. It's the last time I remember yeah. a Sundance winner being, you know, a, yeah. a, a thing that actually happened in Absolutely. the world. So I don't know what that's about. Anyway, Cam- uh, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz in this uh, in this film set in nineteen ninety three about a young woman uh, who was sent to a gay conversion uh, camp. A theme uh, that was in a few movies last year in yeah. one way or yeah. another. You know, uh, kind of. Um, uh, but again. Did not get picked up for quite a while. When it did get picked up, you know, it was reviewed well, but uh, they only released it in about didn't 80, get much 85 of a release. Meters, you know? Yeah. So I don't know about that. Chloe Grace Moretz just goes to tell, show you, you cannot buy, uh, you cannot buy an opening with a movie star. No, you can't do it. Doesn't work that way anymore. Nope, not uh, anymore. Then, nevertheless, this was a pretty decent film. Not much on that Blu-ray either. Then came you, uh, which starred Maisie Williams and Asa Butterfield. Uh, I remember, I remember reviewing this movie on the radio show. And um, I don't know, Nina Dobrev, it, it was an odd movie uh, about a young woman uh, who has a terminal illness played by Maisie, uh, a young man who is a hypochondriac, nothing wrong with him, but he's a hypochondriac, and this flight attendant that he falls in love with. Um, she latches herself onto him and starts dragging him around uh, the, the city to help her, to help her take care of her bucket list, Maisie, uh, before she dies, and she is teaching him how to, uh, you know, uh, not be a hypochondriac and go after the girl that he's in love with uh, in, in a weird little love triangle sort of um, develops out of that Ken Jong in the movie. It's a, this is just a strange little movie. Uh, not good, not bad, uh, but just odd. Uh, bonus features include a, a featurette in the original theatrical trailer. Uh, Ruth Wilson and, a, and, and Sean Bean in this movie called Dark River. Again, this, is, this was a good movie uh, about a young woman who returns to uh, the family farm after 15 years of absence after the parents die, the father anyway, and she wants to uh, you know, claim that farm uh, that she believes is rightfully hers uh, from her brother. Um, and it's a really, really interesting film, uh, very atmospheric, uh, great acting, interesting story, but again, just did not seem to be able to find a place in the actual world. Uh, Isn't that it, funny? Yeah, did real, did real well at Toronto, too, uh, uh, that movie. Festivals are losing a little bit of their punch. Yeah. Uh, in the same way that awards shows are losing a little bit of their punch. There yeah. are too many of them, and they're packed cl- too closely together, and they're trying to do too much. They're yeah. all competing for too much attention in the marketplace. And at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is the streaming universe, Netflix, and, uh, and well, all of it, uh, has yeah. simply changed the way that the world, that audiences engage what we call movies. Uh, and I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, you know. I'm not sure how this is all going to work out. I absolutely loved Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And they're going to send us a 4K of this as well. Uh, this won a very deserved Oscar. Yeah. And I want to see what it looks like in 4K because there's so much uh, color and action in this thing. It moves a mile a minute. It's just such aggressive animation. Charles, you know what Charles said about this? And it's a perfect way of summing it up. And, you know, Charles Solomon, our, our good friend, who's the animation guru in the world. Yeah. He said it revels in the joy of being drawn. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As, as, as. And uh, so this has all kinds of neat stuff on it uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, special uh, features and that kind of stuff. Look, the well, reason why you want to see this movie, because oddly, this is the best animation of last year, despite the fact that an Incredibles yeah. movie came out. I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> you, that did, but this is the best. I know. This better uh, all, the whole year. We're like, well, then you might as well just give that Oscar to the Incredibles too. Yeah. No, this came along and it was actually better. Look, Black Panther and a Spider-Man movie won Oscars. Yeah, Marvel won like what three Oscars? Yeah, at the last Oscars. That's yeah. that's a milestone. Yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Uh, so got some uh, got some uh, Wellgo titles here that I want to go through because we got giveaways on three of them. And Wellgo uh, has been doing a lot of stuff lately. They're they're aggressively acquiring and releasing, and it's mostly uh, Asian fantasy and martial arts stuff, but not exclusively. They do a lot of genre stuff too. That's really really fun. They're also releasing the new Zhang Yimou film Shadow, which I oh, saw yeah. the other day. Yeah, I, I, you sent me the link. I, I watched did. it the other yeah, last it's, night. It's terrific. Good stuff. It's really good. It's Shakespearean, and it's it, it's it's really it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, Shadow, look for that in in theaters. Meanwhile. Uh, they got a film along with the gods, the last forty nine days, which is a Korean film. It's a Korean fantasy film that's a little bit like uh, I want to say it's somewhere bet- between the last Mad Max and Highlander, mm. and maybe with a dash of uh, the uh, of, of uh, Constantine. Mm. And I was trying to think of how to sum up the plot, and then I thought, you know what? It's an impossible plot to summarize. They already did it for me. This is literally their summation of it. Uh, as the deceased soul Su Hong and his three afterlife guardians face the remaining trials to obtain their reincarnation, the guardians come face to face with the buried truth of their tragic time on Earth a thousand years ago, culminating in a final battle with a rogue god. Mm. There is no other way that you can explain <laughs> that plot. It's a, it was a big hit in Korea. Honestly, that's it. It's like you watch this movie and you just go, how do I even summarize the, the with the and, – and you realize they, they already worked it out. That's that. That's that's the only way to summarize it. This was a big hit in Korea, along with the gods. The last forty nine days, big fantasy epic, uh, and it's really, really well done. It's a lot of fun. I'm a little surprised it didn't get a a, a significant theatrical release here. It's well goes call because mm. they had it. Uh, you know, they they probably just didn't think that the audience was here for that. But I, I you know, I'm going to leave it to them because they're doing a good job. Uh, then we also have the Great Battle. Great Battle is a, is a whole lot of fun. Uh, Great Battle is also a, um, a a Korean film, which is all about a basically an Alamo type battle, and everybody has one of these. Braveheart is one of them. The Alamo is one of them. If you ever saw the Thai film Bang Rajan, mm-hmm. that's one of them. They're all of these. You know uh, 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 the um, uh, what, what's the what's the uh, the the old with the oh gosh. How, have I forgotten now? The uh, it's the one that started all of this stuff. The uh, with the thirteen was it? Was it oh, uh, the thirteenth warrior. No, not thirteenth warrior. The, uh, <laughs> the the Greek thing uh, with the with oh uh, uh, with 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 the, the Spartans yeah. and yeah the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 all the, that the stuff. Persians yeah. are coming in. What, yeah, what? that was such a big deal at the time. Why can I not remember the oh, name? Oh, it's, it? it's out of my head too. But yeah, Gerard Butler and yeah. and all of those guys. Yeah, 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 all right. Gosh, brain is completely fried. Um, Anyway, th- that's one of them too. Small forces going up against a big force. That's exactly what the great battle is. Uh, one fortress versus two hundred thousand soldiers, and it's really, really well done. And it's great action, and it's great staging, and incredible costumes and art direction, and it's epic in a way that American films aren't anymore. And the uh, three hundred, three hundred. Yeah, that, that's what it was, Bloody right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Gosh, my brain. Anyway, uh, terrific Korean film. They make really, really great big epic movies in Korea these days and uh, this is this is one of them so there it is the great battle and then we also have uh, the last one there's Donnie Yen still in his career resurrection yeah. in Iceman the time traveler uh, Donnie Yen just it's unbelievable he, he doesn't was, age he was a, he was a second fiddle to Jet Li and uh, Jackie Chan forever yeah. he's basically the same age yeah. now they are old they look and, up, and, at the end of their career and Donnie is just going at it hard yeah. one film after another he's never been hotter um, he, he's terrific in this. This is this is he, this is also a little bit of Highlander. Um, he's a he's a guy from he's a guard from the Ming Dynasty who winds up being uh, buried and frozen, and then he wakes up in the present day and has to kind of you know mm. do what he's got to do and and set history right by finding the Golden Wheel of Time, which I don't really understand even after having seen the film, but I don't care because Donnie rocks, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Iceman, the time traveler. 
and then the last two Welgo titles here that are really, really uh, these are these are horror suspense titles. They're kind of a riot. I I really kind of enjoy them. Um, the first one is Accident, which is like a kind of a cheesier version of David Cronenberg's Crash in a way. Um, you know, a bunch a bunch of kids uh, they they steal a car for joyriding, and um, they crash the car and um, suddenly discover that they stole the wrong car from the wrong person. <laughs> and next thing you know, the, uh, the joy riders become the hunted. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, actually. Um, it's, it's very exploitation, but it's really, really well done. <laughs> That's on Blu-ray. And this, is, this one's even my favorite. I, I like this one even more. Um, haunted Hospital. Uh, the, now this is a German film originally, but there's an English language, uh, track on it that you can listen to. I don't recommend that. I suggest watching it in German. It makes it creepier, but, uh, <laughs> it does. It's like, you know, oh, wow. That's like very <laughs> creepy, uh, it. to begin with. I'm half German. I grew up hearing German all the time. It always still, it still creeps me out as a language. So um, <laughs> this is the idea, <laughs> and it'll get remade. A bunch of vloggers decide, hey, man, we're going to – or, or hey, man, <laughs> we're going to accept the challenge the, the, on you know, uh, social media. We're going we're gonna to go into this old abandoned, condemned asylum, and we're just going to you – know, will you survive the night? We're going to go, and we're just going to – we're going to vlog. We're going to vlog our experience in the abandoned asylum because we're, we're cool. And, of course, you know – Anybody who's stupid enough to go into an uh, abandoned asylum uh, has to know it's possessed. What's wrong with you? So, you know, mm. enter ghosts and uh, paranormal insanity, and there it is. Uh, Haunted Hospital, which has a much better title in German. Because Haunted Hospital doesn't really, oh, Haunted Hospital, big deal. The German title, Heilstatten. <laughs> Heilstatten. I love it. It's great, right? Heilstatten. <laughs> One word. It just sounds hor- horrific. I don't, you, people even don't even know what that means. Heilstatten. <laughs> go out and ask your friends. Go, have you seen Heilstatten? And say it exactly that way. All right. Uh, what else we got? Uh, uh, Tyrell. This is an interesting film made by Sebastian Silva, who made a really neat little movie called The Maid a few years ago about this uh, sort of sadistic maid uh, to, this, to, this, uh, to this rich family. This is called Tyrell, and it stars Jason Mitchell, who you'll know from Mudbound and from Straight out of Compton. Yeah, um, a, a couple of years ago, it, it, this was meant to, and it even says it here, um, uh, at, uh, sort of a, an answer to get out uh, in, in a certain way, or sort of a, a, actually reflect in the same way the concerns of a film like Get Out. It's about this young brother uh, who gets invited to a weekend uh, out in the middle of the Catskills, um, and he's like the only brother uh, who's at this weekend at the Catskills with all these, uh, with his friend and, and, and his friend's friends who all happen to be white, and they get they get to drinking and stuff goes a little bit sideways, and um, they, they, there you get it. It's a satire. Uh, and, and a bit of a horror movie sort of all rolled up into one. Um, uh, it's not Get Out and, uh, and certainly not that effective. Sebastian is a good filmmaker, though, and I'm a big fan of Jason Mitchell. You know I, what? Get Out was so original. I am totally okay with people doing a few knockoffs. Yeah, you know. I'm, you, I'm okay with it. You know, yeah, it, it's, it's, Sebastian's an interesting sort of an interesting Half the stuff guy, we too. talk about every week are knockoffs. Uh, almost always, dude. Yeah. Uh, at Quake, this is interesting. 1904 uh, in uh, Oslo, there was this gigantic earthquake. Yeah. Uh, this movie is about uh, these which, uh, crea- which created uh, a tidal wave. Oh by yeah, the way. Tidal there have been a few movies yeah. about this, about the, about that yeah. that whole yeah. thing. Uh, this movie is about these. I love that the, they have the, the what those. Uh, what do you yeah. what, do they, what do they call it when you uh, those, uh, lenticular? The lenticular. Uh, um, I used to call them testicular <laughs> holograms when I, didn't when I do the show Mark. with Mark. Um, uh, and this is about uh, some seismologists uh, who are measuring things and looking at things, and, and they figured out that another qu- quake about the size of that 5.4 from 1904 yeah. is very likely to happen right smack dab under the capital, yeah. uh, Oslo, which is actually true, by the way. It yeah. is. Um, I think the last one was called The Wave. The Wave, which, yeah. Which, which, exactly. which, was, uh, which was also like a Hollywood resume piece. That's all these are. They're Hollywood yeah. resume pieces. Yeah, so you can come over here and make yeah. the exact same movie for way more money. Exactly. Uh, AI Rising is kind of a neat movie from Serbia, although it is in English. Uh, it's about a trip to Alpha Centauri, uh, on which there is a human and uh, mm-hmm. this extremely lovely uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's a little bit like Ex Machina. 
Machina or Ex Machina, yeah. right? It's a yeah. little bit like the Alex, like the, the, the Alex Garland film. Uh, it's got a it's got shades of that. Um, yeah, I, I, I saw I saw, I, saw I, th- I thought it was okay. It was okay, and the neat special f- features on there. Two, Gerard Butler and Peter Mullen in The Vanishing. This is an interesting, loosely based on a true story about these these lighthouse keepers who just flat out went missing. Yeah. Uh, uh, then you know, they involve some gold and a boat and this little and this little patch of land where this lighthouse is, and it's a mystery that goes on to this day about uh, about these guys who went out to the lighthouse and they, they when they came out there to replace them six weeks later they were just flat out gone. Food still on the table, the fire still lit, one chair upturned. Honest question. Mm. What does it take to make Gerard Butler turn a script down? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, apparently nothing. Uh, apparently nothing. <laughs> apparently nothing. Once he started working, he figured he was not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> not going to stop. Paul Parazzi. Gerard, Gerard, let me let me pitch this idea to you. <laughs> no, nah, it's all right. I, 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 I'm sold. Oh right, okay. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> that Scottish accent. We should, we should, actually, I can think of a couple of things we do need to pitch him. Um, yeah. uh, Pop, Paul Paropsy. This is just some silly little Hollywood movie. It's a grindstone film. Uh, Remember, yeah. look, I've, I've said this before. Grindstone and their their deal with Lionsgate. They make two kinds of movies. Um, big macho uh, gun movies that usually have Bruce Willis in them somewhere, or movies about talking animals. Yeah, and this, and that's, this one, and the talking animal, is voiced by Christy Swanson, Jay Moore in the film. For a while there, I thought Jay Moore was going to have a career. You know, honestly, he was, that, that sh- what was the show, The uh, be- it was before Entourage, the uh, the agent show. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, what yeah, I remember that? that, yeah, he was walking, I forget the name of the show, but yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, that show should have taken off. Yeah. That was so, that was just such a Bitter, bitter show, and nobody except Hollywood insiders really, really D- didn't, didn't really, really get it. They didn't, didn't get didn't it. Really get anyway, it. interesting stuff. All right, um, we got a few things here just just to wrap out with some Criterion and some Arrow titles. I'm going to hit the Criterion's really fast. The Magic Flute. We're still going to do our big box set on the uh, Bergman coverage. Uh, that thing is just huge. Got to got to set a good good week aside. But independently, you can still see Ingmar Bergman's Magic Flute on Blu-ray. It has now been released. The 1975 staging of uh, Amadeus's opera, which is a, an unusual Bergman film, but it's a really really beautiful staging of it. There was also a version of this uh, recently, a few years ago, that Kenneth Branagh did, which is also very very good. But this is um, this is lovely. And this was uh, specifically done for Swedish television, and it has a Peter Cowie interview on it and a uh, feature-length documentary that was made for Swedish television as well about the making of it. So you get a lot of juice on this. Uh, but it's look, if you don't like the opera, you're not necessarily going to like the film. But as a filming, as a screen version of an opera, it is certainly one of the more interesting ones, and it does have Bergman's unique qualities uh, in terms of the filmmaking. Uh, what an amazing Criterion release this is. I did not expect this. From 1927, The Kid Brother. Mm. Uh, Harold Lloyd Western that is such a joy uh, to watch. This is one of the lesser-known Harold Lloyd movies, Safety Last, and you know there are a few others that everybody always focuses on. This is a delight. Uh, it really is. If you've, if you've never seen a Harold Lloyd movie, or even if you have, this is the one to, to rediscover. It is so beautiful. It's slapsticky. It's heartfelt. It's um, it's it's almost his Buster Keaton film in a way. He takes his persona to a place mm. that he doesn't necessarily in some of the other ones. And there are loads of extras on here. Uh, Stills Gallery that was specially curated by uh, Harold Lloyd archivist Richard Simonton Jr. is absolutely beautiful. There's a, a video essay video essay on the shooting locations, um, an audio commentary from 2005 that was uh, done by Criterion at the time with uh, uh, Richard Carell and a historian Annette D'Agostino Lloyd and Harold Lloyd's granddaughter Susan L- Suzanne Lloyd. Uh, wonderful audio commentary with all three of them, all kinds of discussions about who he was and you know what his, his, his filmmaking philosophy was. It's absolutely beautiful. And uh, there are even a couple of restored early Harold Lloyd shorts, Over the Fence from 1917, and that's him from 1918. It's just all great. There's nothing bad about this. I, I, Harold Lloyd's such a gem, unfairly overshadowed by Keaton and Chaplin mm. at the time, but really every bit they're equal. Uh, Edgar G. Ulmer uh, made a great noir called Detour in 1945. Ulmer 
is a is such a fascinating guy. Worked primarily on Poverty Row. Yeah. Made super low budget films uh, on Poverty Row for much of his early career, and was not really uh, given his due as a filmmaker until he kind of popped up and and made a, a few memorable noirs. And this is one of them, Detour, um, which is still a Poverty Row film, but it's it's one of the better ones. It mm. really it it's it, it's a you know it gives you a it gives you a real, real sense of the country because it's about a guy who hitchhikes from one hitchhikes from one coast to the other. So it's not a noir that just zeroes in on L.A. It really kind of noirs up the whole country in a way, and um, it, it's it's really, really wickedly well written. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you that it's super well written. So Detour uh, also comes with a, a few extras, including a documentary from 2004 where they interview all kinds of people: Roger Corman and Joe Dante and even Vim Vendors. And um, an interview with a, uh, a, a, a the, his scholar, a, a, an Ulmer scholar and biographer named Noah Eisenberg is really really good. And then the uh, last couple criterion. Well, let's see here. Uh, we got three criterions left. Wanda, written and directed by Barbara Loden, is a film that you've probably never heard of because I never heard of it. Mm. It's from 1970. It is the only film that Barbara Loden ever made. Interesting. Uh, first and only film, a, a an independent American film by a woman director in 1970, and then her career ended. Mm. And it's really, it's a fascinating movie. It's a sad story. Um, there's an hour-long documentary. Star- stars her, too. She's, yes. Yeah. Yes. It is. It's, it's all her. It's an entirely her film. And uh, there's an hour-long documentary on here that features an interview with Barbara Loden from 1980 that gives you a lot of insight into why this was the case. And then there's also a, uh, an AFI interview with her from 1971 and uh, an episode of The Dick Cavett Show from 1971. Um, but as to what this is, it is it, when you think about where women were in 1970. Kind of in you know there was it was the there was there was obviously feminism. Mm-hmm. There was a, the Vietnam War mm-hmm. and all that stuff. You know you're moving from one decade into the other. We've had the moon landing, but you know you've got Charles Manson the offing. I mean this is a this is a crazy time in America, and um, it's right in the middle of the first Nixon administration, and all of that uh, comes into play in this. This grungy Pennsylvania story that is is kind of a um, it's kind of a proto feminist story about an oppressed woman mm-hmm. uh, looking to find her place in the world, and it all comes into play. It's a really interesting movie. It's a great discovery, and Criterion deserves all kinds of credit for discovering that. Yeah, uh, I want to hold your hand, uh, it, which a lot of people don't realize. Which is all about you know the Beatles and the this uh, the, these teenagers who are desperate to go and see the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show and they it's their, it's their crazy crazy road trip to go and do it. A lot of people don't realize this movie from 1978 was produced by Steven Spielberg and directed by Harold uh, uh, Robert Zemeckis mm-hmm. and co-written with his partner Bob Gale, who also co-wrote. Uh, Back to the Future and uh, Romancing the Stone and all that stuff. These are golden era people here, Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis and uh, and, St- and Spielberg, obviously. There's a conversation with all three of them on here, which is great. And a uh, an audio uh, commentary from 2004 with Zemeckis and Gale, who are always great to talk. And um, uh, it's terrific. It's really, really terrific. I'd, I'd forgotten how much fun this movie was. I used to make fun of it, and it's mm. actually great. And then the last criterion I'm going to make mention of is Hapon. Um, I don't like this film at all, but a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. 2002, uh, Carlos Regadas. This was kind of his breakthrough feature film. His, it was his first film after making some other stuff, but his, his first feature. Uh, and I don't like Carlos Regadas at all. I think he's just unbelievably pretentious and is self-absorbed, and uh, I don't like his movies. But Criterion sees value in it. A lot of other people did as well, and uh, it is now out in a director-approved edition, all 134 tortuous minutes of it uh, about a guy who goes you know, on, a, on a pilgrimage to kill himself and meets an old woman and you know, winds up rediscovering things that he shouldn't rediscover. Mm. I really dislike that movie. But mm. look, go for it. Mm. 
What else we got? Uh, Durhan von Baskerville. So this is the 1929 silent, the last yeah. silent version of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Love it. Uh, uh, from from uh, Richard Oswald, who had actually worked on the 1914 uh, uh, silent, uh, yeah. the Hound of the Baskervilles. But this is the last one. It's a really, really lovely movie, uh, completely restored, uh, again, from 1929, black and white, uh, German film. Um, uh, really, really neat. Uh, this is from, uh, th who, who, this, is this Flickr Alley? Flicker Alley, yeah, good yeah. stuff. Flicker Alley, no, that's that's great. They continue to do really, really great uh, Blu-rays, uh, and th and there there are some others that just arrived the other day that got to uh, got to go through. But yeah, wow, fantastic. Uh, and and it, it, it's funny. Um, uh, this is Poetic Justice, jo John Singleton's film, Poetic Justice. I think the twenty fifth year anniversary of yeah. this is coming up. Can Janet Jackson, Tupac Shakur, years? dude. First of all, uh, I did a set visit. To this yeah. film uh, when they were wow. making it. Uh, it, it, that's how long ago. And, and plus, I did the junk at twenty five uh, years ago. Two, Tupac, <sighs> what a shame. You know what a mess. Uh, he, was, he, see, was, he was a wonderful actor. If you want to see what a great actor he is, the end of this movie where they where they they uh, crash that family reunion. Yeah. Is hilarious. Oh, it's just and so. He, and you think Tupac's a gangster who played gangsters? No. No. He, there's a family reunion in a park, and here you have them on this road trip. Maya Angelou. Yeah. And, yeah. Right? and they see and and they're like. Black family, I have a family <laughs> reunion. We, we can, we, we're we're related. <laughs> yeah, we, we are now. We are now. And, and, he, over there. and when he goes up, and he, and and some some old guy comes up to him, and he goes, he goes, it's me, it's Lucky, little Lucky, little Lucky. And the guy's like, little Lucky. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a thing. priceless moment. It is a pri It's one of the best moments in any John Singleton film. I got to tell you, and, and, and it's it, all because Tupac owns the comedy of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't playing gangster. No. Yeah. And also in this movie, uh, recent winner uh, of an Academy Award, Regina King, playing yeah, Janet Jackson's right. best friend in this movie. She is so good in yeah. this movie. Had been playing that little girl on that sitcom for years. Yeah, perfect and she, world. And she plays this hard, so hard good. girl. It, it, it's just a really, really, really neat movie. Anyway, uh, some neat stuff on this, never before seen uh, deleted scenes, including the very rare, and I have actually seen this before, original screen test between Tupac and Janet Jackson. Uh, John Singleton, who, by the way, went to USC, uh, which is, you know, one of the schools that we were talking about. Now, John Singleton went to USC, uh, that writing, writing program, and he didn't get in because his parents could pay for anything. Yep. He got in yep. uh, because he wrote his ass off and got into USC, and his parents paid the, uh, paid the bills. That's how he got to school. Anyway, neat stuff. Po uh, poetic Justice, 1993. And we're going to wrap out with some exploitation titles from Arrow Video, uh, who who's keeps coming up with, they're like becoming the criterion of all all this uh, kind of exploitation stuff, especially foreign, and then of course Arrow Academy is just legit Criterion level stuff. Uh, it's really, really good. Colobos, um, you know, this is this is really unbelievably gory, and it's not your. Th uh, if you like gore, man, you're gonna get uh, plenty of it in this. This is really nasty stuff. So uh, this is. Um, it's just a it's a slash and it's a slash and gore movie mm -hmm. man that's all it is and um but it's it apparently has some kind of legacy it's it comes it, it was made by daniel Lyadovich and david todd Ockvirk. and it was this is from the late 90s when a lot of a lot of slasher movies were kind of in in a revival period we were getting sort of uh, renewed interest in all kinds of especially west craven oh, yeah. a lot of new stuff and um, th you know, this is it, it, it's it's a bunch of kids think they're going to be participating in an experimental film, and then it turns out that it's really just a just a trap. It's like a reality show trap for you know all yeah. kinds of uh, torture and snuff stuff, and you know it's it's the it, it's it a little bit a little bit of saw yeah. in this as well. It's all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, but it's it is it's over the top enough to be. I guess noteworthy. Uh, and then uh, from the 1970s is Strip Nude for Your Killer, which is a, uh, in principle, it's a, it's a giallo film by mm -hmm. Andrea Bianchi, but uh, it, it kind of has its own sensibilities as well. It, it's trying to be something other than just another um, Italian giallo film. And there's a lot of, there are a lot of extras on here that sort of try to give it that sense. I don't know if it really, really succeeds, but it's a, it's trying, and you got to give it uh, the benefit of the doubt just for trying. Mm. The really interesting era released this week is a box set called Blood Hunger: The Films of Jose Larraz. Um, Jose Larraz is a Spanish filmmaker who who worked in the same vein 
as all of those other genre uh, genre filmmakers in in uh, both France and in Italy. Uh, they're all doing a you know a little bit of sixties seventies era, doing a little bit of giallo, but a little bit of exploitation, kind of the same stuff that's going on in the U.S., but mm-hmm. with a, with an arty hue to it. And he really is an interesting filmmaker, and this is a worthwhile box set for anybody who really likes that stuff, who who lives in that in that realm. It, it includes three films from the nineteen seventies: Whirlpool from nineteen seventy, mm-hmm. Vampires with the Y. The old, uh, the old uh, classic way of spelling it from 1974, and uh, in 1978, The Coming of Sin, um, and all of these have really, really interesting social observations going on in them. Uh, vampires is is the one that most people have probably heard of. I think it did get a theatrical release here. It's about female vampires I- in England, and uh, there's kind of a, a again a proto feminist theme going with that one. But the one that's most interesting to me is is actually The Coming of Sin. Which is it deals specifically with uh, the Roma, and it's all from the point of view of this young Roma girl, this mm. young gypsy girl, and uh, that also, you know, it's interesting with how he deals with female characters, especially in a genre context, in an exploitation context. Um, you know, the, all of her sexual repression mm-hmm. and her fantasies. It's really, it's it's much more impo- It's it's much more mature than. Uh, more mature filmmaking than I think what uh, you would normally expect from this genre. So, Blood Hunger, the films of Jose Larraz, L-A-R-R-A-Z. Lots of really cool extras in here for all of these films. Uh, Interviews, and um, there's even an 80-page book here that talks all about uh, Larraz's films, and it's really, it's it's quite good. So it's a good box set from Arrow. Hats off to them. Mm. All right. So let's hope uh, next week we have some kind of good news. We're getting close to a big moment uh, in this Writers Guild uh, oh, agent, a- agency, ATA, Association of Talent Agents uh, negotiation. It's not even a negotiation. It's an ultimatum by this point. So yeah. for those who are following this, Hollywood is weeks away from potentially changing in the most significant way in 43 years. And, and, and what's, what's bizarre about it, it's, it's a change back. Yeah. To agents simply representing clients and getting paid right. for representing their clients. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what this is still. Yeah, I we know. talk about this quite a lot. We've gotten know? so far from that. So we that the uh, the Writers Guild votes on the twenty fifth, and then April sixth is D Day for anybody who's following that. We are following it with interest. Mm. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you.